Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks with another tutorial for MassiveSynth.com. First, if you're not subscribed to this YouTube channel, please sign up at youtube.com forward slash ADSRTuts, that's T-U-T-S. So today's video tutorial is going to be a tip and trick style video where we're looking at how you can introduce some analog uh, circuitry into the sound of Massive. And I know that's an oxymoron, just that sentence, because... Let's face it, Massive is a digital soft synth, so you can't really, you know, obviously have any analog circuits going through this, but you can do some things to kind of emulate that sound or at least a couple of the characteristics of what you would get with a synth that is all analog, i.e. using analog circuits, real electronics, capacitors, all that good stuff. So without getting too much into the debate of analog synthesis, synthesis versus digital and which one sounds better or bigger. I do want, just want to point out that in an analog synth, you're going to have, you're going to have this, the, uh, an electrical current that's vibrating and moving. And it does, it does vibrate in a way that is kind of uh, similar to a acoustic instrument in the physical world. So that's why a lot of people like, like Bob Moog and a lot of the analog synthesis pioneers, they all think that it definitely sounds more natural to our ear. Now, it might not sound better, because uh, I, I certainly think digital synthesis has its place, and there are some things that digital synths can do that analog synths can't, and obviously vice versa. But if you guys have Massive, or you can apply this tip and trick to, I, I guess, a lot of, of soft synths, really, and you want it to sound more analog, th there's, there's ways to do it. And we have a couple other videos on the ADSR network highlighting some things you can do to get massive to sound less digital but this is this video is solely focused on how to get a sound to have more of that analog circuits feel so i have a bass patch pulled up that i made it's called uh bass moog one i guess and it's just a kind of a mini moog type sound right it has that kind of moog-esque feel going so one thing we can do right now it sounds all right but when i hold down a key because this is a digital synth, it's just, it's just very, uh, for lack of better words, it's just very consistent. And that's part of the digital quandary of, of synthesis, of digital synthesis, is that it, it, it sounds so consistent and so clean sometimes that there's no variation. So I guess a good way to explain this would be, take a guitarist, for instance, even the best, most mechanically precise guitarists in the world, every time they hit the you know a similar note or a pass of the chord, there is going to be a slight variation in pressure, a, a speed, you know, maybe the in angles of where they're hitting the strings. That will make it sound a little bit different as you as you play it, but just ever so slightly. And that's one reason why uh, you know session instrumentals still exist today because it can't be exactly recreated in a you know box like a DAW. So what what we're gonna do in this is I'm going to go to my fifth LFO, and I want to just introduce some random slight movements in certain parts of the synth. So if you think about a analog synth, there are the different sections of the of what actually makes it up, and so you want to apply this trick to multiple parts inside a massive. We're going to apply it to the to the um, oscillators. We're going to apply it to the filters. Might even apply it to the envelopes because that's you know the main three parts of any sound in an analog synth and in most digital synths. So we, the the curve is the most important thing. If you just select like a sine wave, you're just going to get like a wobble or your standard LFO LFO sound. But Massive has some interesting waveforms. They have these uh, random steps, and those are kind of cool because it's random, which is kind of what would happen in an analog circuit things change from time to time so you're going to pick one of the random steps and it can be whichever one you want i'm going to go with number two and i'm going to turn the x fade all the way up because i don't want to have any other waveforms here and for the rate i'm going to turn it down pretty slow and i'm going to turn the amp down we can play around with that as we go so for this one i'm going to introduce it to the amp a little bit so then the amp should turn down randomly as i go so let's play it So there's cranking up the rate so you can hear what it's doing. But you can see that it's not, it's not, it doesn't have that typical alpha sound. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually load a, another random waveform inside of the second step, or the second curve, and I'm going to turn my X fade back down. So now it's even more random and harder to hear. So I'm going to turn my rate back down, the amp down. 
and I'm gonna turn the amount on my uh, my amp down as well on the oscillator. All right, and let's apply that same one to the pulse width just a little bit. Just a little on oscillator three. So now we have some movement going in the sound. Okay, so let's load up another, let's load up random steps three because we used uh, two and one. And I'm gonna actually keep this one on a sine wave and just turn the X fade up leaning more heavily towards the uh, first curve. So it's just, there's a little bit of that sign. I'm gonna turn my rate down and the amp down. And now I'm gonna pop this into, um, all right, so with this specific sound, I can't, I have two envelopes affecting the cutoff. So there's not a lot I can do there. So what I can do is let's load up another low pass, uh, turn down the uh, resonance, turn down the cutoff, and I'll turn, turn it up. And then I have all these leaning towards filter one and two already. So I'm going to just apply a little bit of this, this envelope, or I'm sorry, this LFO to the mix of the two filters. So there's a lot of low, low frequency action going on in just filter two, which I turned off filter one right now. So this is just filter two. So you can hear it moving ever so slightly. So let's bring this back up and I'll turn this down and let's turn on filter one and see what we have. All right, so it's starting to sound a little bit less robotic and, and consistent, which is good. So with this first uh, filter, you see that these are controlled by envelopes. The filter is the, the cutoff. So let's go to those envelopes, and we're going to load up a, another LFO. I'm going to select, select step four and in the top one, and I might select step one in the bottom and have it kind of in the middle, and turn the rate and the amp down. And now I'm going to have, so we have two and three as the envelopes that were affecting the cutoff of filter one for the sound. So I'm going to take my seventh LFO, and I'm going to modulate a couple steps in that. So let's take, let's take the attack just a little bit. And see, sometimes it'll speed it up or slow it down, which is cool with these LFOs. As you can see, the uh, part of it's going up, part of it's going down. And I might actually just affect the level just a little bit. And then let's go to that third envelope and see what we got here. So I don't have it affecting the pitch or anything. I do have it affecting the uh, oscillator three's pulse uh, position. So let's turn this level up actually. And now let's see what we have. If I crank this amp up, You'll really hear it, but I'm going to turn this th the rate down. All right, so if I turn these off and then play it, you should hear a fairly noticeable difference. So it, it's something that's definitely subtle, but in a context of a song or if you have a pad, especially anything that evolves over time, this can help add just enough variance to where it's not sounding like a, you know, the stereotypical digital synth sound. All right, so if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't checked out MassiveSynth.com, head on over there. Tons of cool things, Massive related. They are going up weekly. So again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.